Take a seat, please, and sit in the middle of you guys. No, I'll sit in the middle. Okay. So, um, first of all, Nicola, thank you very much for joining us. He wasn't supposed to be here, but he just said, yeah, why not? Uh, so, um, I would like you, each of you to just give a brief intro on your background, uh, what you're doing, so people actually get an idea. Uh, I believe your background is pretty interesting, so... Uh, I think everybody knows, uh, mostly uh, uh, the Lebanese attendants know, I was uh, previous minister of telecom telecommunication of Lebanon uh, from 2011 to 2014. Uh, but uh, currently I'm the chairman of the UK Lebanon Tech Hub, who runs an accelerator program amongst other things, and I'm here under this capacity. They've told me you're the coolest minister they've ever had. That's what they've told me so far, so pretty honored to have you. Thank you very much. Sami, please. Yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming today. Uh, so my name is Sami Awusab. Uh, originally born and raised here in Lebanon, spent a lot of time here. Got my engineering degree from AUB as a computer and communications engineering. I did work in Lebanon five years. Then I decided to go to the States and pursue my MBA over there. So I did go to UC Berkeley, and that's where the whole thing started. Excuse me, you went to Berkeley? Yes, I did. Go Bears. Hey. Boom, man. Sorry. Awesome. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I did go to Berkeley, uh, did do my MBA there, and that's where the whole startup journey started for me. I did have a startup. We didn't do really well. We kind of stopped at some point and missed on a big opportunity to raise like $1.2 million. Uh, after that, I went and worked for Skype for a bit, for like three years. And after Skype, I just returned to Lebanon like five months ago to run Speed. So today I'm the CEO of Speed. And uh, we're like having a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of great stuff happening. So uh, looking forward to tell you more about that as well. It's pretty awesome. I, I was just talking with Sami before, and I was telling him, you know, you and I look like brothers, and you just said you went to Berkeley. Me too. So it's like, whoa, that's amazing. Theo, please. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Theo. I recently joined the startup ecosystem in Lebanon. I worked in venture capital with US companies for the past six years. And with the boom that's happening, I believe there's a lot of potential. That's why I joined the booming ecosystem in Lebanon. And I'm currently running Bootcamp, which is an idea stage accelerator to help people get funding. So you come from the enemy. From the enemy. <laughs> OK, so um, I will throw in the, the, the first question, and we can keep evolving from there. So. There's a lot of definitions of what an accelerator, or in your case, pre-acceleration program is. So why do we need them in the first place? I mean, is it this just a copycat kind of phenomena that's happening all over the world? And you know, because the Americans started the first accelerators, now everyone wants to have their own accelerator. Or are they really useful? And for what? The, the best would be to ask the, the startups who are going through the accelerators how useful they are. But uh, what we are seeing uh, and uh, what we think the, the use, we, the value we see is for uh, young entrepreneurs or hoping to be entrepreneurs who have an idea but how, who are not prepared for most of the problems they are going to face in real life, in, uh, in uh, real commercial life when going uh, they have a great idea, they have a, a good potential, uh, they, they thought of a service or of a product that they think uh, can serve a basic need uh, amongst uh, a specific uh, target population or the global population. But then the journey starts and it's an adventure. It's an adventure for someone who already is, uh, made uh, four or five companies the sixth company is an adventure. So imagine for someone who never did anything because it's just going out of university to all these challenges, uh, he needs to be prepared. I've done four companies. I okay, can totally so, agree so you're, <laughs> you're slightly more prepared than uh, the guy who's just starting. Keep learning every day. Exactly. <laughs> so so uh, what the accelerators do is they try to uh, arm or, or give tools uh, for these entrepreneurs to how they they are to pre better prepare them to face all the challenges they will face. So it's 
it's no, no knowledge, uh, it's uh, academia, it's, uh, it's uh, workshops, it's uh, tips and advices, it's uh, benching them, uh, benchmarking them uh, towards companies who do the same, it's uh, teaching them uh, the, the mistakes they are probably going to make and how not to make them, uh, how to choose uh, the, the proper resources, a thousand uh, ad different advices uh, that will only better prepare them, but that will not take away the challenge because still they will have to fight and they will have to, they will have a lot of problems and they will, hopefully they will fix them and they will succeed. So you, it's you, you can say it and they will die, you know, most of those companies will die eventually. What I, what I usually say, Mexique, what I usually say is that all these entrepreneurs are heroes. And, and they are heroes and they are superheroes because I'm, I'm a comic book fan myself. So I say they are superheroes. And even the ones that fail are superheroes. Huh? Because just by having the courage to undertake this huge challenge and keeping on until the point where they fail is already a proof that they are heroes. Of course, some of them make it and then the sky is the limit. So really, uh, hats off to any entrepreneur, specifically in Lebanon. I'm just curious, how many of you here are in a startup? Raise your hand. Okay, probably half. How many of you here want to do a startup? Okay, core, okay. Who just walked by and said, okay, this is cool panel? Ah, a couple of them, thank you. <laughs> Sammy. Well, yeah, to your question, I guess there are many aspects of this question to look at. And if you look a little bit at what's happening in Lebanon, like I think here on this panel, we have three of the main players right now in the value chain of building a startup. So it's a whole value chain where there are multiple engines that get people ready to become the next big thing. And I would say like our city are probably at the very early stage of helping people figuring out their idea through a boot camp that prepared them to the next stage. I'll leave it to Teo to talk more about that for sure. And then we come a bit at a later stage where we take those ideas and help them to progress to become a product. So we spend with the actual startups and the entrepreneurs three full months of coaching and mentoring to help them go to the product. Now, why is this important? Because many people who want to start their own business either have developed a great idea, but they don't have maybe the full skills to do that, or they actually uh, want some connections in the industry they're in to uh, take it to the next level and to build their distribution channel and to do all these important things they potentially would need much more time to do it on their own. So the word accelerator is here for a reason. It's because they want to accelerate the process of taking their idea into the actual product. And that's potentially what this ecosystem of uh, partners are doing here. Now, if we want to look a little bit at also what's happening in Lebanon overall, to take a little bit a step back, and what the central bank did two years ago was a circular 331. So there were $400 million, again, $400 million poured into the startup ecosystem in Lebanon. And that's for the uh, technology sector mostly. Uh, looking at this, this is a big amount to be poured into a country as small as Lebanon which is great, this is like super positive and this is something super great, but at the same time, that money needs to be invested in high quality startups. And this is the reason why accelerators could help anyone who's at a VC level or later stage investment to build a pipeline of really high quality startups and entrepreneurs that are capable of developing and building the next big thing and to grow it and scale it up worldwide. So I think uh, that's a little bit of a gap that we had maybe two years back when the money uh, started flowing into the market. But I think this is what we're trying to achieve here, all of us together, is to help uh, that money gets used in the best possible way by having higher quality startups going to the VCs and then later on having maybe better exits and better return on investment for the central bank and for the Lebanese economy and for the taxpayers potentially. Uh, now, I'll tell a little bit also what we're doing at speed particularly that's important. So. We have a three-month program, yes, and at the same time, uh, we have a lot of mentors. Some of them are local, and some of them are also international. I personally tried to bring uh, with me some of the connections I had in Silicon Valley, in Skype, in Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, you name it. And the reason why these are important is not just for the brand names they bring with them. It's because they have experience at something that's really big scale. Like, we're used here to a small market. We're only 4.2 million people. No matter how big or how uh, accomplished your solution is, it's probably going to attract a small number of users uh, because it's a small market. 
you definitely want to be thinking more like MENA region and even global. And that's where the experience and expertise of such mentors come into place and fills that gap for those entrepreneurs who are maybe born and raised in the country or have only exposure to this region of the world. This is why this is super important for them to get to meet those people, learn from their experience, understand how things work at a global scale instead of just being focused at, I think, a bit of smaller scale. Uh, so I think that's a little bit how I see the accelerators contributing to this market and also to the Lebanese economy at this stage of the uh, circular kind of investment. Okay, and why do we need pre-acceleration? Well, if we, if we take back the question one second, it's why is there an accelerator in the first place and why are we copying the United States to be specific? The, the point of an accelerator is, as its name suggests, it's accelerating something. And I believe it's accelerating the process of being an entrepreneur. What would take an entrepreneur on his own a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of mistakes in, in general to learn and to become at a phase where he is ready to take his product and develop his product to a point where he is ready for a big investment and big growth and scalability is being condensed into a three-month process of intense coaching, mentoring, help. That's in the case of speed. But to take it back a little bit before that, to be able to enter speed, you have to have a business idea that is developed to a phase where it's, even if it's an idea, it makes business sense. And a lot of people come with ideas that either are too big or too idealistic in a way, or they come with ideas that are too small. I mean, the first thing we say at bootcamp is, forget Lebanon, not as forget Lebanon as a place to start, but forget it as a market. It's a great pilot market because we're tech people who are very innovative, who are very willing to try new things. But it, as much as you, if you, even you take the whole country, that's 4 million people. So the first thing is people need to think a little bigger than Lebanon. But the issue we face also is that I think a lot of people think, okay, not Lebanon, I want to make it big. But what's the natural step outside of Lebanon? The natural step is the region. But that's the problem, I believe. That a lot of people think, okay, uh, we shouldn't focus on Lebanon, let's focus on the MENA region. But then I tell them, why not global? Why not directly global? Why are you focusing on the MENA region? I think there's this friction that stops Lebanese people thinking, no, no, we're not good enough to compete on a global level. I want to take my area, my secure little area, which I believe is a very big mistake. And a lot of teams that come here are, are facing this. And we're trying to help them understand that, no, they are good enough. And with the partner programs, whether Speed, whether UKLTH, whether us, we're preparing these teams to think global. We don't want to compete on the MENA region. We want to be able to say we're producing global startups that are competing on a global stage. And I believe the talent we have and the passion we have from the entrepreneurs, they can do that. Okay, so this actually prompts me to my next question, and you kind of have answered that, which is <clears throat> when you receive, uh, so there's a bunch of startups here. So what are the, the one thing that when you talk with an entrepreneur that's trying to get into the program, what are they, the red flags that you go like, no, 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 you're not material for an accelerator. And which ones are the green flags that you go like, oh yes, this guy has, you know, spark in his eyes, we want them. Uh, I'll answer this one. So potentially, like when we start looking at the uh, startups that apply to speed, the thing we look at is the team. This is like the number one for us, number one criteria is the team. So some of the red flags we've seen with startups we got, so in the first batch, we got maybe 100 plus applications, and we were able to choose in the beginning like seven yeses and five maybes. The maybes, and this is where the red flags actually came up. Either they're not willing to commit full time for three months. So what does that tell you? That tells you that the entrepreneur's life does not actually depend on that startup. And that be means that they probably would not invest their full time energy and effort to actually make it happen. As is in the previous panel, it, entrepreneurship is not a hobby. Exactly. It is not a hobby. Like, this is something that should be a dedication full time. Yeah, you might fail. You're taking a risk. But if you're aware of that risk and you're willing to fail, you better take it uh, like, to the end, not take it halfway. So that's one thing. Like, the commitment is key. We never take a startup that's not willing to commit full time, at least for the three months acceleration, where they can do the bulk of the work and build their product. That's number one. 
Number two is we look at also startups who own their platform. You cannot be in a technology startup and you don't own your platform. Like you have to be the one who's developing the platform. You have to be the one who's able to actually go through the code and uh, fix the things whenever that's needed. So some of the maybes we had were actual uh, really good ideas and they also had some revenue, some of them. The problem with them, they had outsourced their code to a third party developer, meaning that's gonna take them a lot of time to go back to the developer, change the code and come back. You cannot be in a lean startup and moving fast and have, you don't own your code. This is not possible. Like, Forget about the startup if you're actually not building your own thing. I have a question. How many of you here are developers, actually? Raise your hand. Few of you are developers. I'm, I'm actually surprised. I asked this yesterday, and there was like, yesterday that we had two hands up. So what happens with the people that don't know how to code? So there are actually programs in the market that can get them to code. I think Loagon is doing some coding school. There are also a lot of graduates here, but they're not staying in the country. Like, uh, if you talk to maybe Berry Tech around here, they tell you that by the end of the summer of every class that graduates from AUB, for instance, 80% are already outside the country. So I think there is a problem in uh, retention and uh, keeping the talent in the country. This is something that's tough to do at this stage. So I think, yeah, we have a scarce, uh, scarcity of developers in the country. That's, that's true. So Nicola, how do you retain that talent? What are the things that you see that don't make sense to you and make sense to you? I think uh, retaining the talent depends on, on, on the success of the whole uh, ecosystem. Uh, the salaries will get higher, the, the talent will be more appreciated, and, uh, then the, and the success story of the whole uh, ecosystem of a specific startups will make even any uh, employee or any talent dream big and dream to be associated with, with success. Because at the end of the day, money is not the only motivator. You are motivated by uh, being part of something successful, of an ecosystem that is... Uh, After four companies, I can tell you that. Don't do this because of the money. Exactly. <laughs> we, we, we're always poor. Even when you make money, you'll spend it on your next venture. So. Exactly. Uh, and to come back to one point uh, that was uh, mentioned earlier, the, uh, the level of uh, startups we are uh, seeing, at the Tech Hub at least, is, is, is according to the uh, international judges that were uh, in the selection committees uh, and according to Babson uh, College, which is the uh, number one uh, entrepreneur uh, uh, university in the world, are some of the best uh, startups they saw in the world in terms of the people managing them and in, term of, in terms of the ideas. And this is a very good news. Uh, originally, we had 145 applicants uh, to the uh, UK LTH uh, accelerator program. We selected 45, which was the target, and we were supposed to select 15 for the phase two. We selected uh, 25 for phase two because the batch was too good. And the 15, we were supposed to find two or three good companies that had the potential to be uh, global winners. We think we have at least 10 out of the 15 who are uh, potential global winners. Uh, and two or three of them are the stuff of unicorns. So we are very optimistic about the quality of the, of the, of the Lebanese entrepreneur. Theo, you want to add anything that for you guys is a red flag apart from thinking small? Well, the, the <coughs> Red flag, no, at an idea stage, red flags are very much dependent on the person. So is this person accomplished? Is this person just here to ride the wave that he doesn't really understand? But that's the advantage of an idea stage compared to speed, for example, where they have to be more selective because they are committing money and a lot of time with these people. At an idea stage, you are able to apply, and although there are certain red flags, the first thing I tell all the batches that come in is, I hope you're glad of the idea because it's going to change. <laughs> so, and many of the teams, I don't believe any team actually, graduated from boot camp with the same idea they had at the beginning. Yeah, that's what they say of the plan. You know, you plan, but the plan never survives the battle. Exactly. But here comes the difference between people. Some people are 
motivated enough and willing to learn enough and willing to put the effort enough to change that idea into something that actually works. Some others are get demotivated instead because they felt like they had only this good idea and they don't understand that it isn't the idea that makes things work. It's actually you working on fixing that idea to become a real solution to a real problem. But other than that, I don't believe in red flags. I mean, you could say dropouts shouldn't be part of it. You could say you're targeting more experienced people. But I believe as an entrepreneur and with the way things are moving, everything is moving so fast and improving so fast that the only important thing I believe is that you are willing to put the effort and to learn everything as it goes along. It seems so easy. It seems easy, <laughs> but it takes a lot of effort and you have to be patient. This, I think you touched on something that's very interesting, which is one of the critical aspects of acceleration and pre-acceleration is uh, receiving or having entrepreneurs that, are, that can cope with feedback very easily and can adapt quickly. So I'm wondering, this is my first time in Beirut, so you guys are my guides here. So how do Lebanese people, and in general, in the MENA region, take feedback? Are they stubborn? Or are they easy to steer to new paths? I think... Be honest, come on. When, when the things are objective, it's very hard to give feedback. And everyone becomes very defensive. No, like, how do you know? I mean, I know my idea is awesome. I've asked my friends or whatever. So... I always tell, your mama is not a market. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, when you go into a process that requires actual validation from people who are facing the problem, and are they willing to, to solve it? And when the feedback comes, it's like reality hits them. You know, people try to avoid this as much as possible because they want to live in this idealistic place where my idea is awesome and it's going to make everything beautiful in my life. Let's, let's try that. Who thinks their idea is awesome? Come on, raise your hands. Oh, yeah, there we go. Those of you that are raising your hands, you should, man. You should believe in your ideas are awesome. <laughs> but... You, I know your ideas are so, but you should be willing to change your idea to whatever the market tells you. It's not about, I want to make my idea implemented in the market regardless of what, whatever happens. It's about learning to get feedback, learning to get validation from the market. And that's the only way to grow and scale. If you're not fixing a real problem that people are willing to adopt, no matter how good the idea or how cool the idea is, it's just not going to catch up. Yeah. True. Sammy? Yeah. I just want to add one thing regarding the idea. That's something I faced a little bit as a difference between Silicon Valley and here. So people here are a little bit reluctant to share their ideas. And this is a little bit, to be honest, bad. You guys should be all over the place sharing your idea. You've had the NDA moment? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did that. So the thing is that you don't share maybe the IP or the intellectual property you own. Yeah, that's fine. But the idea itself, the more you share it, the more people will give you feedback about it, and the more actually you're going to develop a better product later on. And the key is not the idea. It's how you execute on it. So if you really, it's a really good idea and you can execute on it, that's what's going to differentiate you. Because if anyone else can take that idea and do it, then your idea is probably worthless. Like, you're not adding value here. You're not solving the right problem, maybe. So do share your ideas. This is, like, extremely important for you actually to get the thing out there. And people will start talking about you, get you a lot of traction, get you people talking about you, get you maybe investors without you knowing about it. So that's one thing regarding idea. One more detail I want to add regarding the feedback. So I understand entrepreneurs, I've been one at some point, that they're very passionate about what they're doing and they really want to push forward for what they're doing and they sometimes do not listen. They probably do not want to listen because they're so much into the thing of passion. It's like they love that it's their baby. It's not like something they're just creating. We understand that, fair. But at the same time, for you to be successful, you have sometimes to just take, take a step back, look at it from outside, and see why people are telling you something different. They might or might not have a point. Some people are maybe giving you wrong advice. That happens. But just take a step back, try to be a little bit objective about what you're doing, take a little bit of the love component on the side, and like, okay, maybe they have a point. Maybe they're giving us advice because they've been there, they've done it, it didn't work, and they can actually take us to the next level. So I understand the passion element, but try a little bit to tone it down when you're listening. Just listen. It's actually interesting that you say that. Um, I think the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my entrepreneurial journey was recognize I had to shut down my first startup. Uh, it, you know, it's your baby. It's like saying you need to 
you know, kill your baby and you resist with all your effort. It's like, no, no, I haven't failed. I mean, I come from Spain, a country where failure, you know, is tough on people. There, there, there's a big risk averse uh, against failure. And it's just like this nagging voice inside your head that goes like, no, you're not a failure, you know. And then, you know, once you do several startups, you embrace failure, man. It's like, okay, let's fail fast. I do this, fail, do this, fail. Still not rich though, but I'm working on it. On the feedback, I think it's, it's a very interesting and, and tough question. It's a tough question. One, culturally, uh, we, no, we're not good on, on feedback. We're quite stubborn. We're quite uh, sure of ourselves. Uh, this is good in some ways and it's bad in some ways. Uh, second, uh, there is no good or uh, sometimes there is good and bad ideas, but most of the time there is no good and bad idea. It could be a great idea, but it just applies to 5% of the people and this market is not big enough. And you tend to think that people are, are like you. So the innovator or the inventor thinks that because he behaves like this and he thinks like this, the product or the service will answer the needs of everyone where in fact it only answers people like him and people like him are a minority. Second thing, the idea could be great, but the timing could be wrong. And this happens to the best ideas in the world. Ideas that are now unicorns and a, a few billion dollars valuation. Someone came up with them uh, like 10 years too soon and uh, it, it just uh, nobody knew about it because it just died. So, so the question becomes, a third, third point on this issue is, is decrypting the feedback. Because sometimes you can have a feedback, but how to decrypt what the feedback is telling you? Because you may think and be biased and think, okay, they don't like it because the color is not good. But in fact, they don't like it because it's not good. So, so decrypting the feedback is also a challenge. It's actually on that note, it's interesting. Both of you run accelerators, and this is a phenomena that happens in accelerators a lot, where you bring in a mentor, and they tell A to a team, and then you bring another mentor, and they say the opposite to the same team. It's like, how do you decrypt that? It's like, okay, these guys are, both of them are well-known entrepreneurs or have an incredible track record. How do you decrypt that when what someone is telling me to go one direction and the other one is telling me to go the other direction? I think the best mentor for a startup is the founder of the startup. He is, he is the best mentor. He, he just uses the feedback he's getting from the mentors as if he was getting them from consumers and, and, and be uh, as much rational as he can be. So the enemy in this is the emotion. If you can take out the emotion and be just rational, you'll be able to decrypt any feedback you're getting, whether it is from a mentor or from a user or from a friend. So if you're passionate, if you know what you want to do, if you, have, if you know what's the core value of your idea, then you can be very flexible and at the same time very uh, systematic in your approach. It's so hard to leave your emotions. <laughs> and like, one more thing, don't take feedback personal. That's very important. I think in the Middle East we tend to take many things personal. Feedback is not personal. It's about the idea, the business, just take a step back on that. And I guess also on decrypting kind of the uh, message when you get feedback. We had the situation right now during the acceleration. One of the startups had two different feedback that were almost the opposite from two different really well-known mentors that are serial entrepreneurs, very successful. And then they came to us like, this guy told us this, this guy told us that, what should we do? We're like, okay, I think you guys got that feedback for a reason. Take a step back, talk to more people, collect more information, and do a little bit of the wisdom of the crowd. like maybe. That one thought about it that way because they had a particular experience in that case. And that one had a different experience that told you something totally different. That doesn't mean that X is right or Y is wrong. It just means that there is a feedback there for a reason. Talk to more people, get a bit more of uh, crowd uh, knowledge, and then based on that, you can actually move forward there, with the best decision. There are many ways to the summit, actually. Okay, so uh, we're running out of time in our panel, so we're going to open the floor to some Q&A. So I need someone to lend me their microphone. There we go. So any questions for our panelists, please? And I know a lot of you have questions, so take the advantage that you have them here. Come on, questions. I have someone at the back there.
Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, good to hear you all speak today. Um, I wanted to know, so you say, um, and I agree with you, that uh, doing a startup is not a hobby. You need to dedicate all your time to it. It's long hours, it's cup noodles, it's like sitting in a room with three guys for a long period of time or more. What do you, uh, what's your recommendation or what do you offer as accelerators or pre-accelerators to those teams who, who may need to work to provide, they don't have enough cash to just sustain themselves to invest their time into the, into the startup. They may need to have a side job. They do this in, at night or at home. What's your recommendation or support there? Well, <laughs> this is exactly what we're doing at Bootcamp. Uh, our program isn't full time, nor is it you have to quit your job to come. The point of this isn't because we don't believe you need to do this. It's because you need to validate your startup before you commit your, to your startup. The whole point of the bootcamp program is to make you build your business idea, refine it to a point where once you pitch in front of speed or once you pitch in front of any investor or VC, you are confident enough in your idea. You have validated from users and you are willing to take the plunge of one, once I take my investment, I'm confident enough in my startup that I, I have to quit my job to be able to make it work because nothing works part time. No, no big startup in the world was built from six to nine or from on the weekends. And yeah, from Speed's perspective, we also offer... So. On, on the part-time, I, I don't think anyone thinks that he can actually do a successful startup part-time. What probably some entrepreneurs think is that they can start, start uh, uh, exploring the idea and, 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 and developing the, some steps of it part-time. And this is not unacceptable. What's unacceptable is to think that you can have a, a, a big startup, successful startup, by just doing a partial effort. This is impossible. So it really depends on, on, uh, on the expectation and on the realistic approach uh, towards time uh, commitment. Uh, and the phase you are going through through your life. So I won't discourage people who want to explore uh, in a part-time manner some ideas and, and launch some uh, strings. But once, once it gets serious, for sure you have to be 100% committed or else you're, you're, uh, you're, jeopardi you're jeopardizing the dream you are working for. One thing that we offer at Speed, so part of the acceleration, we offer a 30K injection in cash, and we do allow the founders to take part of that as a salary to be able to actually uh, complete like, and have a normal life. Like, we don't want them to be staying on the street. They're, we know they have expenses. They might have a house to live in and these kind of things. They need to eat. So <laughs> that's part of uh, what we allow them to do. Entrepreneurs don't eat, man. They They're... don't sleep. They have to eat. Uh, no, we don't. We breathe in stuff and then we do, we do our thing. There is a funny story actually about one of our startups. There is one guy who actually does sleep in the accelerator. So there is a lounge we have and the guy's name is, last name is Nava. So the lounge is now named after Nava. It's Ma Nava's lounge because he actually sleeps there to be able to finish the product as soon as possible. Okay, so we're going to take one more question. And I'm sorry, and I have to go. Nicola, well, then we'll take two more questions. <laughs> Nicola, thank you very much. Please, big applause. Okay, question there. There we go. Um, okay, well, uh, you guys mentioned the importance of being global and having global startups, but uh, what opportunities? I know there's UK, UK LTH, which does offer exchange programs to the UK, but what do you guys plan to do to bring the startups in Lebanon and actually bring them on a global scale, maybe through exchange programs yeah. or spaces around the world. Let's make it sure so we can get as many questions as possible. Okay, just like one quick note. Uh, this is part of the bootcamp teams. He's They're one of the finalists here. Yeah, he's, uh, he's yeah. in the top five teams that in the, are in the idea stage. Woo! Uh, just a quick mention to understand why, why this guy is here. He's a 20 year old kid that once Not a kid anymore. Not a kid anymore. He's an entrepreneur now. But when he first came to bootcamp, he, he had a like, very basic idea and worked so much on it that he's here now. And I knew he's going to be someone when, like a few days ago, he was preparing his pitch and he was telling me, can you listen to my pitch? I was like, okay. And he's like, no, no, wait. I want you to destroy my pitch. And that's the feedback that, you know, I want to be better. Let me know how to become better. And that's why he's here. Yeah. 
Woo! Just that's very true. I heard his pitch yesterday, and it was one of the best ones. So. Very quick answer to uh, your question. So we have actually a partnership with two big accelerators in Silicon Valley. And what we're doing is that we're giving the opportunity to our startups to apply there. And if they get accepted, we're giving them actually a grant, not in return for any equity, to go do a three months acceleration in Silicon Valley with one of the top accelerators there, like not any random one. And they have also another opportunity to go do like a one month uh, Silicon Valley immersion with our program. So we are covering that part of the acceleration. We know how important it is. And we want the startups to get that global uh, exposure and coverage in Silicon Valley as well. OK, last question, guys. I have someone over there. Uh, hi. In the previous panel, I asked, like, what would be your advice if, for the youth who do have a lot of ideas but do not have the expertise or the knowledge to develop um, the product or the idea that they have. And you said that they should be able to do their own thing. While in the previous panel, the answer was like to storyboard and then just try to experiment with universities or whatever, then just try to find a firm or someone to actually uh, invest in the idea. But what would be like your she, advice? She's Madalena. She's already. Yeah. Uh, well known in this stage. Uh, contradictory feedback, as we were saying before, so pretty cool, pretty cool question. Uh, I would say no, no, no startup can be built by one person. Any startup has to have a certain mix of skills that combined together make a great team to build a product. Whether it's technical, no technical person can build a startup on his own. Whether it's business, no business person can build a startup on its own. Whether it's marketing or sales or anything it is, you need a combined effort of people who are passionate enough to learn, to continually improve what they're doing, to be able to make this the best thing they can do. Or else, I know, I mean, a lot of people have ideas, but you have to have a network around you that knows what you're doing, that's willing to commit with you, that believe in your passion and your vision, so you can build the product together. I don't believe in the, in the, especially for business people, a lot of them think, okay, I have this idea, I'll just hire a development team and he'll build it for me and then it's everything is fine. It doesn't work this way. And the other thing I would add to that is that first go to like places like our cities, you can get a lot of expertise there. But the other thing you can do on your own without going to any of the, these programs is just uh, first thing, get some advisors, some senior people who've been in the field, who've done that. And you'd be very amazed about how responsive those people are. Like I was talking to some of the entrepreneurs here and they have really famous already and they're like having a lot of successes. And when we reach out for mentorship, for them to come spend like a full day with us, they're more than happy. They tell us, okay, can I spend more time with your startups? Because Two years back or three years back when I did my startup actually I had no help and now today I really want to help those uh, people who are in my who are who are in my shoes like two years back so reach out to people even if you don't know them at all they're gonna respond people are super collaborative in this space they're super helpful and this whole community thing is like really super good so also if you want Come to us at speed. We can actually reach out to our mentors and let them help you, even if the you're not joining the program. The booth is right around the corner, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so just come to speed. Go to our city. I'm sure they will share their mentors with you. I'm sure that the UK Lebanon Tech Hub will do the same. Just come talk to people. Uh, be a little bit upfront and tell people what you want, what you need, and they'll be super helpful. Like, don't be shy about that. Well, guys, it was a big pleasure. Thank you very much, Sami. Thank, Thank you, Matthew. Thank, Thank you, guys. you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.